this is my rig here. My hunting's always been about being mobile and portable. And to be mobile, you got you got to be self-contained the way I always looked at it. And uh, and to be uh, portable, you want everything as light as possible. Hunting long distance from the vehicle, you you, you need to be that way. And uh, this is uh this is my gear box right here. This one little old bitty box has got everything I need in it to hunt. It's got all my climbing methods. It's got my stand and uh, anything I need to make a hunt except for the stuff I carry in my, my uh, Primo's bow hunting vest. So uh, let me let, let you take a closer look at it. First of all, one of the most important things is my stand. I use a lock-on limit. It's an old model, weighs six and a half pounds. The ones they made later were a little bit heavier than this. This is about as, as light and portable as, uh, as you can get. Uh, next thing is my, my rock climbing harness. Uh, in, my, in the old days when I first started hunting, uh, my safety standards left a lot to be desired. I, uh, at best I would use a, a, a lineman's belt to secure myself to the tree while I hung my stand. And then I would take it off after I got seated uh, because I didn't want any restriction at all. Well, the older I got, the smarter I got, and I, I realized the uh, the value of being safety in a safety in a tree stand. So I, I went to a regular safety harness and always hated them. They restricted me. I didn't like them and everything. And, and uh, last summer, uh, Brian Landry introduced me to a rock climbing harness, and uh, of course I got mine. I got mine uh, customed out to my needs and everything. I got my woodpecker drill and bolts in this bag right here. I got my brownie limb saw right there. And I got an adjustable lanyard right here with a persic knot. And this is what I safety off with right here. So that's my rock climbing harness right there. And let me go a little more detail with this. This is my, uh, this is my woodpecker drill right here. It's uh, Jerry Simmons come out and uh oh i don't know when he invented this thing but uh he's the one that's invented simmons broadheads anyway he uh he designed invented invented and designed this woodpecker drill and what it is it's a little hand drill that you drill a hole about two inches deep in a tree and you can drill a hole about 15 seconds and uh insert a, a grade eight hardened boat six inches by three eighths inches and uh you stick it in the hole and use it for steps and once you drill the tree, it's good for the uh, rest of the season. You just pull your boats when you climb down, and when you go back and rehunt that tree, you just insert the boats in the tree and go on up. And so, in my opinion, the, the lightest, most portable, safest way to climb a tree to hand, uh, hang a lock on stand and hunt out of it. But that's my woodpecker drill. And of course, I got my, my Alice pack in here. That's for pretty much primarily hauling deer out. I feel quarter of my deer and pack them out and uh, leave the carcass for the critters. And, and uh, hunting long distance from a vehicle, I found this the only way you can get a deer out hunting, hunting solo. And uh, this here, I definitely carry a deer out, with no problem. And then my, my original and, and favorite climbing method is, uh, is tree climbing spurs. I got a little bag I carry them in. And I have these holes on there to keep them safe, punch them through my bag. For a pair of these uh, strapped to my lock-on stand, I mean, they don't weigh anything. They're steel, steel gaffs with aluminum frames. So they're, they're, the pair of them weighs about just a little bit more than just a single on a regular steel type hook. And uh, they're easy to carry on the back of my stand. And uh, four buckles, and they're on my legs. And you just walk up a tree hang your stand. And then my other method of climbing are these rope steps. I got them rolled up like that and you just you just uh, take them like that and hook them around a tree and pretty self-explanatory. And uh, I use these mostly for hardwood trees and pine, big pine trees, oversized pine trees when hunting public land where uh, the woodpecker drill and the uh, hooks are not legal. And then my other method is my strap steps. And, and uh, 
these are a little bit more bulky than the, than the than the uh, iron steps. But with these strap steps, I can I can go around real real small diameter trees. I mean, just little old bitty fellers. And uh, and especially these pine plantations that I hunt sometimes, some of these trees won't be that big around. And these uh, steps right here, they don't cinch down tight enough. But this right here, it'll cinch right on down tight enough to climb a tree this small and, and a pine tree at that. Uh, I don't climb pine trees with my hooks and I don't climb with the woodpecker drill due to the sap. The sap gums up your woodpecker drill with hooks. You're gonna, you're gonna penetrate the bark and that sap gets everywhere and it's, it's really a nasty deal. But uh, also got uh, a spare woodpecker drill. And the reason I got this is uh, Jerry Simmons sold his, uh, his business. And uh, he's the one that offered the woodpecker drill. And the man that bought it in Mount Montana discontinued the woodpecker drill. And uh, I, I've done got where I'm really, really dependent on that woodpecker drill. I use it more and more, especially when I'm hunting a tree more than twice. If I hunt a tree one time, I'm going to use my hooks. If I hunt it two or more times, I'm going to drill it. And uh, and I really depend on my woodpecker drill. I drilled 24 trees last year that I hunted out of. So that gives you an idea of how important it is to me. Well, with the woodpecker drill unavailable and the opportunity to break the starting tip on the bit, you know, I felt like I was gonna, if I broke that tip or quit drilling or whatever, I'd be out of the business. So I found this easy cut drill. And it's basically the same thing as the woodpecker drill. It's a little bit different, does the same thing. It's a little more, more compact. It opens up a little more and really good. But right now, I'm, I really like the woodpecker drill better, even though this is just as good and maybe even better. For somebody who wasn't familiar with them, I still continue to use my woodpecker drill and I use this for a backup. And, uh, and then I got a, a shooting ref, one of our rifle hunt. Sitting on those little bitty lock-on stands, you don't, you don't have a lot of room and, and it's mostly freehand shooting or unless you brace off your knees. And uh, I don't do too good like that, freehand shooter. I like a good steady rest, especially for the longer shots. And uh, I come up with this thing. This is an adjustable knee clamp. And what it does, it when you're sitting on a stand, it clamps on your knee like that. And then you can adjust this by pulling this pin right here. And it adjusts up to different heights to make, make, your, uh, make it right for your gun. And that's, that's a very, very, handy item when hunting big cutovers where you got long distance shooting. And uh, that's pretty much it. I got a I got a tree umbrella in case I hunt in the rain, which I didn't got too old to do that. I don't do that much anymore. And uh, this is my little uh, my little uh, monopod that I when I do self filming, which I don't do that much anymore either. I set it up. It goes on my stand. It's a it's a uh, monopod for my video camera. And ever popular <laughs> th uh, thermos cell. And I got my hunter's orange. So you can see I got everything I need to make a hunt. Now what I'm going to do now, I'm gonna, I want to demonstrate the woodpecker drill and show how easy it drills and the spacing on, on the boats and, uh, and, and talk a little bit about that. Before I uh, show you how I drill a tree, I already have one tree drilled here a little bit from demonstrating to different people. But uh, this is one I got some holes in, and this is the way a tree would look after it done been pre-drilled and you return for another hunt. And this is how simple it is going to be to climb. Well, what you do, you just walk up and and, and find your hole, and uh, take and, and stick that bolt in that hole just like that. Had a little little fluid in there from last time. That'd be the first step, and you come over here. This is a hole right here, and you. Uh, Insert it in that, and then you go up to the to the next one, and you can drill all three of these holes from the ground. Go up and put that hole in right there. Notice these boats, uh, they got a rubber coating on it. It's a plastic bond you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's. And, and what I do, I, I dip these boats to the depth where it's going to reach in a tree. So the hole's going to be this deep. And I, and I do this for a couple of reasons. The first reason is, for safety's sake, to make sure that I got that bolt in all the way. All I have to do is just 
notice that, that the rubber coating goes all the way up to the tree. The second reason is because this rubber coating makes it a little more silent carry in your bag. They don't rattle quite as much. But that, that'd be the first thing I'd do like that. Now, if you notice, this is a this is a relatively small tree, but it's going to be the same distance apart, whether it's a great big tree or or a small tree. And uh, I always hang my tree on my stand on the right side of the tree, so I always drill my first boat on the right side. I use I use even number of boats. I use ten boats, push me twenty foot high. And if my even one's going to be at the bottom and my odd one's going to be at the top, I'll be able to put my foot on the one, the highest one, and hang my stand on, on this right side over here. And uh, I know a lot of stands you buy are rigged up to hang on the left side, but I'm more comfortable hanging on the right side, so I, I, I make the change in my stand to ad adapt to that. Now, when you, when you get ready to leave, as you climb down the tree, all you got to do is just pull that bolt out as you come down you just come on down the tree and and I, a lot of times i'll take and put my thumb underneath it and grab it and just pull it out but they come out real real easy especially with a new drill where the the bit drills a good hole and that's it and and, and saying that i don't mean to uh make you think that the that the, the uh, drills wear out the original drill i got i got in 1983 and I used it all the way through like 98 or, or no, actually uh, 2004, I believe. So before the bit wore out. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how easy it is to drill a hole. The weakest point of this whole thing is the starting tip on this bit. If you're not careful, you will snap it off. And once it's snapped off, you can forget about it. It will not drill. And uh, to compensate that weakness, you want to hold it real steady when you start. So you pick your spot. Now, what I normally do, I, I drill everything knee high. My, my first drill is the height of my right knee. I drill the right side and then put a bolt in it and I'll put my foot on the bolt and then measure on the other side the knee high and drill the other one. So what you want to do, you want to, this is a, this is a sleeve right here and it, it turns and spins. So what you want to do, you put your bolt in there like that, your bit in there like that, hold this sleeve and Put your hand, your, palm, your heel of your hand against a tree to steady it. And you want to go relatively slow start. And you turn, and this is like a 15 second process. Now once it gets started, it gets solid. And, and, you, and your starting tip is past the point of being in danger. Then you can take and just crank this thing like this. You can crank it as fast or slow as you want to. And you keep drilling until you feel it slip. And that sleeve is going to hit there and it's going to slip. All right, it's slipping right now. So you don't unscrew it. You just wiggle it and pull it out. And as you pull it out, all the shavings come out. And then you can insert a, a bolt in. Just, just like this. And it's just that easy. This is uh, another view of the, of the drill. So you can see. Put your bit right where you want it. Put your heel of your hand against there and hold your sleeve and hold it steady. Don't let it wiggle and don't let it wobble and until it gets started good. It don't take long for it to get started and get solid. And that's pretty solid now. I think I can turn it loose. And you just crank on it. All right, the sleeves is slipping now, so I'm gonna pull it out. Right there, and take, insert a bolt in. Now this is a, a small tree, but believe it or not, I've drilled trees a lot smaller than this and climbed. Might not be able to get up by 12 foot, but some places that was all I needed. And another tip is, uh, when you're drilling hardwood trees, you can get away with drilling them level like this. But if you drill a poplar, a willow, or a cottonwood tree, it's a soft tree. And uh, I usually drill on a little bit of angle, like this, especially a smaller tree. If you drill it on an angle like that, and it, and it does, it, the tree is real soft. And when you put your weight on it, especially somebody over 200 pounds, it'll give down a little bit, but it'll never go past level if, if you get that little, little angle on it about like that. And it works good. That's pretty much it. You just want to remember that you want to, you want have your boats drilling about uh, 
knee high apart and and you I always drill three stand on the ground and I only drill seven more and I, I got my lineman's uh, lanyard on my, on my belt that I adjust for different size trees and uh, I just drill a hole and take a step up drill a hole and start a bolt take a step up and uh, I can usually takes on a fresh tree uh, tree just drilling tree for the first time I could probably be in my stand drill all the holes put the bolts in as I'm climbing and be in the stand ready to hunt in 10 minutes which is pretty quick and then the beauty of it is once the trees drill it's good for the season. You come back anytime during the season and put your boats in it and climb without drilling. During the spring, the tree glow as the tree grows, the holes close up and uh, and doesn't do any damage to the tree. Good luck.